Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a very interesting application of Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, of course, is the force between two charged objects and the means of calculating that. Writing the equation down, we can know that the force between any two objects is equal to the constant K times the product of the two charges, Q1 times Q2, divided by the distance between them squared. So that's known as Coulomb's law. So here we have a beryllium-8 nucleus. The beryllium-8 nucleus is not a very stable nucleus because normal beryllium is beryllium-9, meaning it has one additional neutron in the nucleus. The reason why beryllium likes to have one more additional neutron is it separates the positive charges in the nucleus just a little bit more so that there's a better balance between the forces of the, the electrical forces of repulsion can be controlled by the strong forces holding the nucleus together. But if the, two, the four protons in beryllium are too close together because of the lack of a neutron, they tend to be, the force of repulsion tends to be so strong that the beryllium tends to split up into two alpha particles. Of course, once the two particles are split up and there's any sort of distance between them, the nucleus strong force can no longer hold them together and the repulsive forces between the two particles, the two alpha particles, will be enormous and will shoot the two particles apart from one another. What we're going to do here is we're going to first calculate the force between them when they start at their initial distance of 5 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is a little bit bigger than the typical nucleus of an, of an atom. And then next we're going to calculate the acceleration at that moment, and then we're going to do something interesting. Of course, as they go farther apart, the force between them tends to diminish, and therefore the acceleration will, of course, diminish as well. But if we assume for a moment that the force and the acceleration remain constant long enough for the velocity to reach close to the speed of light, which, by the way, they will tend to do. How long will it take for the two particles, the two alpha particles, to reach a speed close to the speed of light? And how far will the particles have gone? Again, assuming incorrectly, of course, that the force and acceleration will remain constant, just to kind of get a feel for it, what happens at this subatomic or atomic level. All right. We may need to know that the charge of a single electron is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then if we reverse that, therefore the standard charge, one coulomb, is equivalent to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 charges, charges or the charges on a single electron. Also, the Bohr radius, the radius of a hydrogen atom, is 5 times 3 times 10 to the minus 11 meters or 0.53 angstroms for comparison. And then K, the constant that we use in Coulomb's, the Coulomb's law equation, is 8.99 newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared. Sometimes you will also see that K can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space, and epsilon sub naught can also be written as, let's see if I remember that right, uh, that would be 8.82, I think it's 8.82 times 10 to the minus 12. That would be, of course, that in reverse, that would be uh, Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. Of course, we can quickly check that by taking a K and multiplying times 4 pi and taking the inverse of that. So we get 9, or better, 8.99 e to the ninth times 4 times pi, and then taking the inverse of that, and we get 8.85, oop, 8.85, not 8.82. Ah, good thing I checked, not that it matters too much, but there it is. All right, and times 10 to the minus 12, I believe, right? Yes. Okay, so sometimes instead of writing k, they write 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so whatever you prefer. So first of all, let's figure out the force, and so using Coulomb's law, we can say that the force F is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. I like to just simply call it 9 instead of 8.99. Makes it easier. Multiply times the two charges. Ah, we need to figure out how big the charge is. And of course, we have two charges in here. That's the charge in each charge. Again, we'll call it 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs. So two of those, that would be uh, 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 
times 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So each of these alpha particles will have two charges. I know they're positive, but it doesn't matter. The magnitude of force is still the same. And then we divide that by the distance between them squared, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 15, and we have to square that. All right. So let's see what we end up with. So we have 9 e to the 9th times 4 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus squared. Divide that by 5 e to the 15 minus squared equals, and it's like 36.8 roughly. So the force is roughly 36.8 newtons. Imagine that. That's an enormous amount of force between two tiny, tiny little particles. Alpha particles are basically the nucleus of a helium atom. They're so tiny, and yet the force between them is absolutely enormous at this very, very close distance. Therefore, you will have a tremendous acceleration. Using the equation F equals ma, of course, we can say that A is equal to the force divided by the mass. And so the force would be 36.8 newtons, and the mass would be the mass of two alpha particles. They have four nucleons. Each nucleon has a mass of about one atomic mass unit, which is one gram per mole, which is one one thousand of a kilogram per mole. So what we need to do is, uh, that would be um, two times 0 0.001 kilogram. That's the mass of a single alpha particle. Uh, for a mole of alpha particles, and then we have to divide that by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so that should give us the acceleration. So 36.8 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.001, and then multiplying that times 6.02 e to the 23rd, gives us an acceleration of 1.1, basically I'm going to leave it like this, 1.1, times 10 to the 28 meters per second squared. Imagine the acceleration those alpha particles experience. Now, if that was kept constant long enough for the particles to reach close to the speed of light, hmm, how long would it take for them to reach that speed? Okay, at that point, we're going to use the equation where V is equal to V sub naught plus A times T. Of course, assuming v sub naught is equal to zero, which means that the time is equal to the velocity divided by the acceleration. Assuming a velocity of the speed of light, that would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the acceleration, which is 1.1 times 10 to the 28 meters per second squared. And so the time that it would take for them to reach that speed, so we take the inverse of that, uh, there we go, times 3 e to the 8. That would be a time of about 2.7 times 10 to the minus 20th seconds. You can imagine the acceleration is so enormous that they will reach enormous speeds in a very, very tiny amount of time. Again, we're just kind of faking a little bit because we know that this is not the case. As they move farther apart, the force diminishes, and of course, the acceleration diminishes as well. But you can see that they're going to reach very, very high speeds very, very quickly, even though they're moving apart from one another. Finally, how far will the alpha particles reach by the time they've reached roughly the speed of light? All right, so now we need distance. And so we have x is equal to 1 half, the acceleration times time squared. And of course, that's only taking the acceleration term because the velocity initially is zero, the position initially is zero. And so when we plug those numbers in, we get one half times the amazing acceleration of, oop, where are we? Oop, I'm looking at the wrong number here. Uh, this one right here, which is 1.1 times 10 to the 28 meters per second times the time squared, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 20th squared. And so that would be a distance of, we're going to square that number, uh, divide by 2 times 1.1 e to the 28. That leaves us with a distance of about uh, 4, well, let's say 4 times 10 to the minus 12. Now, take a look at that number, and of course x would be in meters. If we compare that 
to the size of a typical atom, like with the Bohr radius, a typical radius of a, an atom is about 5 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. This is 4 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So in other words, before the alpha particle will reach the outer bound of an atom, where the electrons are located, they already would have closely to, uh, reached close to the speed of light. Again, with the assumptions here that things stay constant, which they don't. So they would have to fly a little bit farther for a little bit longer before they would actually reach those enormous velocities. But just to get a, kind of a feel for it, Things are pretty amazing at the atomic and subatomic level, and the forces involved because of these charges is absolutely enormous. At least that gives us a good feel for things.